Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Pak Damar ganteng menu. Pak Damar. Sayang belum laku. Strategi <laughs> market, strategi marketingnya gagal berarti. Good morning, good morning, uh, Mr. Rosaidi. Yeah. Good morning. 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 How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's nice to see you. So nice it should be nine right? Nine nine fifty two, right? In Sabah. Yeah. Yeah. Are you in in the in the chemistry department or in a? I'm in the institute, uh, biotech research institute. So is it is it different from, uh, chemistry department? Department. Uh, it's the chemistry chemistry department is under faculty of uh, uh science uh, in in uh, University of Malaysia Sabah. So actually, we we have already have some collaboration with the chemistry department. I, okay. I and some colleague in 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 undip already like last year in the in the beginning of pandemic uh, we i i i gave us maybe two two lectures two lecture only uh, two yeah yeah just yes, just yes, swap for from i forgot and the, the professor okay to, to uh, is it pro professor how i forgot because i i contact to dr sabrina okay uh, and and i I gave a lecture in inorganic chemistry at the, at that time. And also not another uh, two uh, another another colleagues uh, give in any analytical chemistry. Okay. Yeah. I think so we have a lot lot of collaboration with, between uh, University University of Malaysia Sabah and Undip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even uh, we, we have uh, also collaboration with uh, Ibu Meni. Yeah, Ibu Meni, Professor uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Mes, yeah. Yeah, Professor Mes. And uh, I think it's uh, two months here. Yeah. Uh, I think before the pandemic. Yeah, 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 uh. yeah. Okay. So, what what kind of your what kind of topic in uh, top your research interest? Is it about isolation or something? Uh, actually, uh, I'm not the chemist. Uh, basically, I'm more to uh, bio as a person. I'm more to biochemistry actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, normally isolation, I, I will uh, uh, collaborate with uh, another university. Uh, they have chemists uh, to isolate uh, the compound for me. But basically, once uh, they isolate the compound, I can test for the bioassay. So basically, okay. I'm I'm not the microbiologist. <laughs> Uh, even the uh, uh, TB and also dengue is quite new to me. Uh, basically, yeah. my research more to uh, anti-diabetic uh, and obesity, lah. Okay, our uh, our uh, our moderator uh, this time we uh, actually Bu Agustina and she 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 is uh, her research is about uh, also in uh, di diabetic diabetics. Okay. That's yeah. Good. Yeah, maybe we can collaborate. <laughs> we can do something. Yeah, Augustina, maybe maybe you can continue. Yes, uh, of course, uh, Doctor Rajadi is um, very exciting uh, yeah. to discuss more later about this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Bu Yayu, I think we have to call more participants to. Uh... Yeah, to attend. Okay, to join. Yeah. Okay. So hello, Dr. Rosaidi. Hello, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Yayu. Okay, yeah. So thank you very much uh, for joining this program and then yeah. willing to come as a speaker. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, uh, this webinar is held uh, monthly. Actually, so yeah. And then, and this time uh, we need to another topic like uh, so. Normally, because um uh, my research is on the uh, inorganic material, so uh this event is always about materials or inorganic materials so now we we need to look for another topics especially in organic or biochemistry okay thank you yeah yeah so basically our audience uh, here is more to chemistry right yeah 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 okay. and then uh, chemistry department department okay. university yeah <laughs> now maybe i think it's good uh, because i'm i'm not also <laughs> know about the chemistry yeah maybe uh, that part we can collaborate in future right? yeah yeah sure yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Actually, last time I talked to Dr. Cahyo Cahyo Budiman, I yeah. guess. Yeah, uh, we need to get more uh, collaboration. Like uh, this, this event is actually one of our collaboration. Uh, yeah. yeah, visiting, visiting lecture, lecture yeah. actually. And then after that, we need to have. Uh, maybe we will have like a summer course or maybe. Uh, adjunct professor actually I offer this program as well because this one is uh, part of the world class university program that I okay. offer to Sabah University. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Chayo has mentioned to me about the adjunct professor. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, okay. I think he already have the candidate for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, already. Right, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> that, that's good. So, yeah, because Pak Chayo said that, oh, we have to strengthen. Our collaboration. So I uh, offer some uh, programs that offer a Diponegoro uh, University through which uh, program. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, I think uh, we have every year we have uh, some 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 activity lah with uh, Undip. So I'm quite happy lah with the uh, with the collaboration with Undip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe can I share my slides or later? Okay, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, later. Uh, we start in three minutes. Okay. Yeah. So uh can see my my screen? Yes, already. Yeah. It's good. Yes. Uh in your presentation you said that you mentioned that you got the mangrove egg plant extra from Indonesia. So what what is the city or what what's the the area? Okay, uh actually uh, this project is a collaboration with the Swiss German University. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, they collected uh, uh, the mangrove from uh, Lampung pro province. Oh, so Jakarta. in I think North Jakarta. Uh, uh, North Jakarta. Uh, this is this is from Sumatra in the oh. south, the south of okay. Sumatra. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And but uh, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, I think we have a delay of uh, uh, the send. Uh, we just received their, their sample. I think uh, this year, so we still not. Um, uh, doing the analysis for for indonesian sample uh, mostly uh, in my presentation today it's mostly uh, the result from the malaysian samples okay okay so but in future yes uh, uh, the project is uh, we want to compare the activity between malaysia and uh, uh, indonesian uh, mangrove so based on yeah based on your title it should be uh, the the kind of mangrove it should be different between Indonesia and Malaysia. Uh, same species. Okay. We want to compare the activity whether whether there's a different in in terms of activity, especially in the uh, NTTB and also anti dengue activity. So the Malaysia and uh, Indonesian uh, samples. So the how to say, the kind of soil give the big impact to the character. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we, we expect that there is a difference now, we expect, definitely. Okay, well, Augustine, I think we can start because now it's 9 o'clock here and 10 o'clock in Sabah, so, right? 10, 10, okay. 10 okay. Okay, so, I will start. Thank you, uh, Dr. Adi Darmawan. Well, uh, thank you very much for coming to join uh, our webinar the 18 JKSA webinar on chemistry. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning all uh, and the honorable chairman of the Department of Chemistry, Dr. Adi Darmawan, as well as uh, chief editor of the uh, journal JKSA. The honorable lecturer today, 
Dr. Ruzaidi Azil Muhammad Mohtar from Biotechnology Research Institute University Malaysia Sabah. Uh, thank you for taking your time to share your knowledge and experience with us. And of course, dear all lecturers and uh, honorable all participants uh, of this webinar. I am Agustina, the moderator of today's uh, seminar, and uh, I'm very pleased to uh, welcome all of you to this uh, seminar. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> let us thanks to the Almighty uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala because of His blessing. Uh, we are able to come here to join in this meeting. And the uh, our agenda today, uh, which uh, the first session will be opening speech from the Chief of Department, Dr. Adi Damawan. And then uh, the second, of course, the presentation from Dr. Zaidi. And then the third, uh, the discussion and uh, closing. Okay, uh, dear all participants, first I would like to welcome Dr. Adi Dharmawan for the opening speech. Time is yours, Dr. Adi Dharmawan. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Bu Agustina. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank to Dr. Ruzaidi Azri Muhammad Mukhtar from University of Malaysia Sabah. Thank you for uh, coming to, to give a lecture for us. Actually, the GKSA, uh, which is the is it stand for for the Journal Chemia Science and Application uh, and Application Journal of Scientific and Applied Chemistry, which is uh, which is ours. We have a webinar which uh, which is held for uh, every month, actually, <laughs> but in 2020 uh, th this year is maybe this is the the third time because a, a lot of business uh, business yeah. Um, uh, this is the 18th webinar. Uh, uh, we start this webinar in 2020. Yeah, this is a blessing of the uh, pandemic because everyone uh, can uh, do the seminar online. So we contact, first of all, we just contact our colleague in Australia at, at, at the time. And after that, we, uh, we invite uh, Many many researchers from uh, from uh, like from UK and from the uh, US, from I forgot this is a lot of, from India also, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, researchers from Malaysia. And this time we invite from University of Malaysia Sabah, which is actually we have a lot of lo long collaboration with uh, University of Malaysia Sabah, especially for the chemistry department. Uh, what uh, Professor Rosaidi, uh, Dr. Rosaidi uh, mentioned before that we have collaboration between uh, uh, our professor here, uh, Prof. Nini Suzeri, and from University Malaysia Sabah, and I myself also have a chance to to give a lecture twice in chemistry department, also juga Borotno and Pak Didi, or if I, I have not mistaken, um, uh, they give uh, gave some some lecture in uh, chemistry department i think um, this is uh, this the continuation of our collaboration and I, I hopefully after this pandemic we can maybe like uh, visiting yeah, like like a, uh, like a uh, visit, visiting academic or visiting lecture can we can or what what we yeah, you said before that we have uh, a young a professor, a young professor, or and something like that. So um, hopefully, uh, this webinar also can give uh, us a new, new, new insight, new enlightenment regarding the what this is topic. This antimicrobacterium, which is actually is maybe like antimicrobial, right? Like that. Yeah, maybe that, well, this is the specialization for Bu Agustina, which is uh, uh, the moderator today. So we have uh, time, it's about uh, one hour. So we go, I, I hope that we can get a lot of uh, benefit from this webinar. Thank you very much for uh, Dr. Uh, Ruzaidi for your coming today and your, your presentation. Uh, this is, uh, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Dr. Adi Darmawan. Uh, okay, uh, dear all participants, the uh, topic of this uh, today webinar, uh, as we all know, this about uh, anti-mycobacterium tuberculosis and anti-dengue activities of mangrove plant extracts from Indonesia and Malaysia. So, well, uh, this interesting since uh, tuberculosis and dengue, we all know that it's a quite major issue in uh, A tropical region, and uh, Dr. Zaidi explore mangrove not only from Malaysia but will also uh, in Indonesia. Uh, as, uh, but uh, so it is a lot of works uh, in our department. As uh, to my knowledge, uh, Dr. Khalil Anam also explore about mangrove. So uh, just like said uh, before, uh, there are a lot of. Um, uh, pro, uh, uh, opportunity for the uh, collaboration. Okay, before we start, I would like to read a summary of Dr. Ruzaidi background first. Uh, so Dr. Ruzaidi Azli Muhammad Mokhtar uh, from Biotechnology Research Institute, University of Malaysia, Sabah. And uh, he uh, uh, get the bachelor degree from the Applied Biological Science from Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology and then the Master uh, Nutritional Biochemistry from the University Putra Malaysia, and PhD from Monash University uh, Victoria at 2016. The uh, uh, professional affiliation um, is not just biotechnology, the Malaysian Natural Product Society, Asian Federation of Biotechnology, uh, Malaysian Invention and Design Society, uh, group Polyphenols uh, and then Nutrition Society of Malaysia. Wow, a lot. Uh, uh, interesting. And then the current research and professional interest, uh, including characterization of anti tuberculosis and dengue virus activities of mangrove, of course. And uh, the second is the role of perilipin 5 in muscle metabolism and uh, the anti hyperglycemic and insulin releasing activity. And then bioactive compounds from Sabah plant used in anti-diabetic treatment. So uh, a lot of work uh, is uh, okay. Uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Ruzaidi for the for his presentation. Uh, time is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Agustina, uh, for the your kind introduction. Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, thank you. Thanks uh, to the uh, Department of uh, Chemistry, uh, Undip, for inviting me to, to give or to share my uh, research, uh, current research in uh, tuberculosis and also dengue uh, using the mangrove. So um, I also would like to apologize uh, because uh, you know, we need to reschedule the, the talk. Uh, yeah, because uh, initially, uh, Actually, I'm in Penang now, still stranded in Penang because my flight is scheduled uh, at 2 p.m. today. So, um, yeah, uh, that's why uh, we cannot do it uh, at 2 p.m. Okay, um, uh, first of all, I, I would like to introduce about my uh, department first uh, so that maybe the audience have something uh, in mind so that we can uh, collaborate in future lah. okay uh, uh, just uh, uh, give me five minutes to introduce my department okay this is a uh, 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 a little bit about my department okay uh, this is uh, the building of uh, biotech research institute so we are established established actually in 2001 okay uh, We established in, in 2002, uh, January 2002. Uh, we just, uh, um, it's very young institute, um, uh, just uh, 20 years. Uh, we are one of the four centers learn, uh, in uh, University of Malaysia Sabah. So basically uh, in our uh, institute, we conduct strategic research, uh, capitalizing on the rich uh, natural bio resources of Sabah. I think Sabah and also Indonesia is very rich uh, in uh, bio resources. So basically, in our institute, we focus more to uh, bio resources in Sabah. Like for me, uh, I more explore to the uh, 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 medicinal plant in, in Sabah. 
So because uh, here in Sabah, we have a lot of uh, medicine, medicine plan yeah, that is under study. Okay, um, this is our new, I not consider new, uh, is we already moved it more than 10 years already. We moved it uh, in 2011. I just want to uh, share about, about our facilities here. Lah. So uh, maybe in future, if anyone interested to, to collaborate, uh, you, maybe you can uh, come here and then maybe use our facilities here. Uh, our facilities is, is, is open yeah, for, for everyone. Okay, um, we have uh, basically uh, 10 main nets, which is a genomic, microbiology, biochemistry, and natural products. Uh, and so on, uh, we have 10. Uh, and also um, to highlight, we have also the biosafety level three. If you work with the pathogen uh, level three, you can work uh, in, in our institute. And we also uh, have the plants uh, transgenic facility. So if you have a work with the GMO plants, uh, you, you can do uh, uh, your, your research here. And also we have uh, support facilities, uh, so, uh, for example, like core lab, core room, culture lab, plant growth room, radioactive lab, and also instrumentation lab. I think the instrumentation lab is the one of the, the expensive lab that we have. Uh, because uh, in this lab, we have the scanning, the trauma microscope, uh, TEM, uh, NMR, and so on. Okay. Um, okay, I don't want to go detail about it. This is the, the facilities uh, that we have. Um, skip this one. Okay, uh, so we go to the uh, our topic today, uh, which is the anti-microbacterium uh, tuberculosis and anti-dengue activities of uh, mangrove plant extract from Indonesia and Malaysia. Uh, as I talked to uh, uh, Dr. Adi uh, just now, um, this is the, the research collaboration with the Indonesia, which is the which with um, Swiss German University, uh, Indonesia. So we start this project in 2018 but because of pandemics there's a little bit delay especially the 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 sample from indonesia we just received the sample and then uh, after this uh, we will um, analyze the samples from indonesia and compare uh, the activity uh, between uh, these two countries okay um basically uh, the uh, the the result uh, from um, my talk today is uh, mostly is uh, from uh, sam samples from uh, malaysia especially uh, uh, spe specifically in, in sabah okay um, why we choose uh, mangrove um, mangrove i think uh, is same with the in, in indonesia uh, we 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 uh, name it as a bakau um, so as we know that this uh, mangrove is live in the very uh, stress condition, like the salt uh, means in, in the sea, they need to have salt tolerance. Uh, even uh, um, uh, the their condition, they live in a very harsh condition. That's why um, research uh, previous research shows that mangrove uh, produce a lot of uh, secondary metabolites. Uh, to protect themselves uh, from this uh, very, very hard, harsh uh, co condition. Okay, um, plus uh, also uh, about the global distribution of mangrove, Malaysia and uh, Indonesia is the largest uh, mangrove area in the world. Eh? So Indonesia, of course, is the first, uh, the largest uh, in the world, uh, and also Malaysia is second. So, but uh, not many research have been done uh, using the mangrove. Of course, there, there is some, but not so many uh, research uh, uh, regarding mangrove uh, in both country, uh, even uh, Indonesia. Tapi ya, abis ini Bu Karolina balik lagi ke Semarang kan? Terus besok baru. Okay. Besok Somebody is talking. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. So in Indonesia itself, uh, in uh, in Sabah itself, is sixty one percent from the total mangrove in Sabah, uh, in Malaysia is from Sabah. So, but um, as far as I know, there's no uh, study um, uh, about mangrove in Sabah. So that's why we initiate this uh, uh, 
collaboration with uh, Indonesia, uh, especially in uh, Swiss German University, because they already screened the, the mangrove uh, from Indonesia for antibacterial. And it shows that the mangrove have very, very high uh, antibacterial activities. So that's why we proceed uh, this study uh, using uh, mangrove uh, plants. Uh. So we want to compare between uh, both the country, uh, Indonesia and Malaysia. Okay, um, and then um, why uh, we choose uh, tuberculosis? So I think um, some of you already mentioned that, um, yeah, the TB and also dengue is a common problem in both country, yeah, in, in Malaysia, in, even in, in Indonesia. So I just give an overview here is in Indonesia. Yeah. So Indonesia is the third largest contributor to the global uh, tuberculosis. Yeah. Even in Malaysia, also the incident rate is quite high, especially in, in, uh, in Sabah, uh, where is UMS is. Um, the incident rate is exceed the, the national uh, incidence rate uh, in Malaysia. So, um, of course, there, there is treatment uh, for, for tuberculosis now, but of course, uh, there's, there's still uh, the drugs that are available now is to have the uh, toxic effect, uh, which can uh, uh, induce hepatitis. Yeah? If you take it a very long time, it can cause a side, side effect. And the challenge here is uh, if uh, we study a better, the challenge is about the multi-drug resistant and uh, the extensive drug resistant. Oh, that's why there's a need to, to search for um, new drugs uh, to, to treat the uh, TB. Okay, for dengue also is also is quite a common problem uh, in uh, Southeast Asia, basically. Even though the, in Indonesia, the, the, the cases is not high as Philippines, Vietnam, and Malaysia. But still, it is a common problem uh, in um, uh, in Southeast Asia. So uh, currently, so of course, there's no treatment. Even uh, there's some uh, group is uh, developing the vaccine for the for dengue. But uh, still, there there is need to to search for uh, uh, um, drugs or alternative drug for treatment of uh, dengue. Okay. Um, we know that uh, medicinal plant uh, uh, is the, the source of uh, uh, drug uh, uh, nowadays. Yeah? So 80% of world population depend on the medicinal plants. So why um, uh, scientists are uh, interested in a medicinal plant? Because of it's a safe, less toxic, and it's a limited uh, side effects. And also, if we talk about um, uh, plants, uh, we always uh, talk about the phenolic and antioxidant activity, which is uh, uh, according to the previous uh, study, uh, this uh, compound uh, is related to uh, uh, inhibition of uh, bacterial and also the, of the virus. <coughs> okay, um, this is some studies that have been done um, uh, in mangrove. Of course, uh, most of the studies is not from Malaysia and uh, Indonesia. Most of it is, uh, if I'm second, it's from Brazil, India, and so on. Uh, not, as I said, it's not many studies that are done uh, in Malaysia and Indonesia, even though we are the largest mangrove area uh, in the world. Okay, um, this is the sample uh, location um, uh, for uh, this study. Okay, uh, in Indonesia, they collect, collected the, the, the samples uh, from the east coast line of Lampung province. Um, and in Malaysia, we collected it uh, in Sabah. As I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, Sabah is have the largest uh, um, mangrove area in, in Malaysia. And just to let you know uh, where is Sabah, uh, actually it's in the Bono Island. So, uh, it's near to uh, Kalimantan uh, Island. So, and then maybe it's near to your uh, capital city yeah, in future. Okay, uh, this is the exactly uh, the, the location. Uh, we collect it uh, from the uh, Sulaiman Lake Mangrove Forest in, uh, in Tuaran, Sabah. So, of, of course, we collect it in several uh, locations because some of the mangrove is uh, live, it's buried in, in the 
deep uh, mangrove forest, we need to go by boat uh, and also collect uh, the samples. Okay, this is the, the picture of my students collecting the samples. Um, okay, uh, after uh, we got the sample, uh, we prepared. Uh, of course, we need to cut it in small and then dry it and then blend, uh, blend uh, it into powder and then uh, do the extraction. So the extraction method is uh, based on the Indonesian herbal uh, pharmacopedia. Uh, 2014 uh, because we need to standardize the extraction method uh, uh, similar with uh, what our counterpart in Indonesia has done uh, previously. So uh, we use the um, uh, maceration method uh, using uh, four different solvents which is uh, water, ethanol, uh, ethyl estate and hexane. Okay, uh, this is the, the samples that we use for this study. So this sample is selected based on the, as I said, uh, uh, our counterpart in Indonesia has already done the uh, antibacterial activity of uh, um, uh, these uh, mangrove plants. And they, they found that this uh, six species is quite promising uh, uh, to, uh, to inhibit the bacterial uh, growth. So that's how we select these uh, six species of uh, uh, mangrove. And also uh, we collect a different part. We try to use a uh, different parts, uh, which is the roots, leaf, uh, and stem. And then, uh, yeah, in total, we have uh, 52 samples. Okay, uh, first uh, we analyze it, uh, uh, the total phenolic content and also the antioxidant activity. So total phenolic content, we use the folin pure uh, uh method. So uh, as uh, the results, uh, we found that the basically the ethanolic extract have um, higher, is the highest uh, uh, um, uh, total phenolic content compared to other solvents. So um, sorry, I don't include the ethyl estase and also hexane extract because the, the uh, total phenolic content is quite low. So I exclude it in, the, in this uh, presentation. Sorry. So basically, uh, both uh, aqueous and ethanol extract have um, higher uh, um, uh, total phenolic content uh, compared to uh, ethyl estate and also hexane. So but uh, when you compare aqueous ethanol, uh, ethanol have a, a better, uh, means higher uh, total phenolic content compared to uh, uh, water extracts. Okay, so we go for next, we go for the antioxidant activity. So we use uh, the DPPH assay, it's a very common assay for antioxidant. And then we found that again, uh, ethanol extract have um, better. Um, better antioxidant activity compared to uh, um, uh, water extract. So again, uh, we don't, uh, I don't include it in this presentation, the ethyl estate and also hexane uh, because the activity is, uh, is quite low, especially in the hexane, some of the samples uh, don't have uh, antioxidant activity at all. <laughs> okay. Um, So uh, we uh, present as a, a IC50 value. So the lowest of IC value is the, high, the higher uh, antioxidant activity. Okay, uh, here, um, I think uh, according to Kusmar Diani et al, uh, they classified the, uh, the antioxidant uh, activity uh, as a very strong activity antioxidant activity if the IC50 value is less than uh, 50 uh, microgram per mil. So as you can see here, most of the ethanolic extract of uh, mangrove have very strong uh, antioxidant activity. Okay, uh, so it's quite, uh, it's quite a good uh, indicator uh, for, for, for our uh, TB and also dengue activity. Okay, um, so just here, just to, 
we have uh, some benchmarking uh, about the um, uh, total phenolic and antioxidant energy. Basically, the mangrove extract have quite high uh, total phenolic content and also very, very high uh, antioxidant uh, activity. So because of that, we uh, we proceed in this study for, for uh, anti-TB and also anti-dengue activity. Okay, uh, we go for the, the main um, uh, objective of this research actually to, to screen the anti-TB and also anti-dengue um, uh, active, uh, activities of uh, these 50, 52 samples of um, uh, mangrove extracts. Okay, uh, for anti-TB uh, screening uh, in vitro, we use the resonating uh, microtactor assay. So uh, in this essay, uh, we will uh, look at the, the change of color of resazurin into the resorufin, reso which is from blue to pink color. So that's indicate that if it's changed to uh, pink color, it's indicate that the bacteria or the TB is still, still alive. Yeah? So uh, of course, uh, we want to see that this uh, mangrove extract kill the, the TB and then of course, we don't want to see uh, it, um, uh, the resonant change uh, to, um, to a pink color. Okay, uh, this is the method. Uh, I don't want to go detail about it. This is the, how we do it. Uh, we use the uh, 96 uh, micro uh, plate. Okay, uh, basically uh, for one plate, we just can uh, screen for maximum uh, three samples. So of course we need to do a lot of uh, uh, analysis. So of course we repeat it uh, three times uh, per samples. Okay, uh, this is how uh, it's like uh, in the plates. So yeah, as you can see here, if uh, the scissoring the change color into pink, so that's indicate that <coughs> the, the TB uh, bac uh, bacteria is uh, survive. So, in this concentration, but um, for MIC value, we need to, to use the, the value that before it changed to <coughs> pink color. Sorry. Okay. Um, so this is the uh, MIC value for uh, resolution assay of uh, uh, 52 uh, mangrove extracts. So as you can see here, um, the ethyl estate is basically is uh, have the highest uh, um, uh, anti-TB uh, activity compared to other extracts. So, so especially in uh, Bugrera gymnoriza leaf and also syrup taga leaf. So they have us, uh, the highest anti uh, microbacterial activity, which is uh, 0 0.04 uh, milligram per meal. Okay. Um, so I think this one is also uh, uh, in accordance to what uh, our counterpart found in uh, antibacterial activity. So they found that also the ethyl estate extract have the highest um, antibacterial uh, activity compared to other extract. So I think it's, it's, uh, this is what, what we found here also, ethyl estate extract also have the uh, highest uh, anti-microbacterial uh, activity. Okay, um, out of uh, 52 extract, as I said, um, 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 uh, the upper, um, Bruguera, Generalizer leaf, and also Shrub Lega leaf is the highest. So the range, uh, all the extract have the uh, antimicrobial activities. Um, that's, uh, I think, it's, uh, it's quite interesting uh, to explore. Maybe uh, we can um, look what is the compounds uh, that are responsible for, for this activity, especially these two highest uh, uh, two highest uh, uh, plants that, that shows the highest uh, anti-tuberculosis uh, uh, activities. Okay, um, this one is just to compare with, uh, with other studies. As you can see, the other studies, the value 
is 20 or 30 something, but our value is a 0 0.05 is 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 quite um uh quite a uh, high. It means that we need a very small amount of uh, <coughs> mangrove extract to kill um uh, the uh, uh mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis. Okay, um this one uh, after after that um this is the project for another project from my PhD studies. So we want to test it uh, into the mice. Um, we want to do uh, the in vivo studies to give the, the mice uh, this uh, uh, mangrove extract. Of course, be, be, before we do in vivo study, we need to do a, a toxicity test. OK, uh, basically, um, we done the acute uh, and also subacute uh, oral uh, toxicity test. So uh, from the acute uh, toxicity test, we use um, high, very high concentration uh, of uh, both uh, Bulgaria gymnosa leaf and also syrup tiger leaf, which is 2,000 milligram per kg body weight. And we found that uh, there is not uh, uh, no significant change in terms of body weight. So indicate that the plants is uh, maybe uh, not toxic uh, to the mice. Uh, but here, as you can see here, uh, for Bigorera, at the end, there's a slight reduction of body weight. So that's why uh, we decide from this uh, result, we decide just to proceed uh, for syrup tagal for, 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 for this study. Okay, for subacute, uh, we just proceeded with the syrup tagal leaf. So, and you can see it, and there's no uh, different in terms of, um, uh, no different changes in terms of body weight uh, of the treatment and also the control. And also uh, there is no um, significant um, different uh, in terms of organ weight. So that's indicate that this, uh, this concentration or this plant is not toxic uh, to the mice. And also, uh, we also test the, sorry, I cannot see. Uh, we test the, uh, uh, some, uh, the kidney function of uh, uh, <clears throat> the mice. And also, uh, we don't see any uh, significant difference um, in terms of uh, 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 parameter in, in the kidney. And also a uh, uh, parameter in the liver. So we conclude that uh, uh, the concentration 200 milligram per kg uh, or 300 milligram per kg is safe uh, uh, for uh, mice consumption. So we proceed uh, this one with the uh, our this concentration for our in vivo uh, study. Okay. Uh, next, um, we will. Uh, we already done this one, uh, MTB uh, subsidiary testing in mice. We infect the TB into mice. Uh, and then after that, uh, we treat them with um, uh, mangrove extract, which is a syrup type for a period of three weeks and harvest the lung for, for analysis of RT-PCR to see the, the changes in the gene expression, especially for the immune genes. Okay, this is a group of uh, five groups of the mice. With uh, each group uh, consists of uh, six mice. Okay, um, this is the, actually the only uh, preliminary data. Uh, my students still analyzing uh, actually the data, but this one is, is already done. Uh, the study. <laughs> So basically, in terms of uh, body weight, uh, there is not much change between the groups. Uh, but if you can see here, uh, the, the TB infected mice uh, without treatments especially have um, a lower uh, body weight uh, compared to uh, other groups. So that's indicate that the, the, the mice uh, that infected with TB uh, uh, don't uh, don't have a, a body weight gain because of uh, the, the bacteria. 
Okay, uh, we also analyze the some uh, the uh, uh, genes uh, to to confirm the infection of uh, uh, this uh, bacteria uh, in the lung of uh, mice. So yeah, uh, we confirm it uh, the expression of uh, IS six one one zero genes uh, is is highly uh, over expressed in in uh, mouse that uh, infected uh, with the uh, TB uh, bacteria. Uh, and also, um, we just uh, managed to to um, and, uh, see see the result for one gene, which is the immune gene IFN uh, uh, gamma. <coughs> so uh, in uh, in the preliminary study, we it shows that the TB infected mice uh, have a uh, over expression of uh, this gene, but with treatment um, with mangrove is able to to reduce the this uh, uh, IFN uh, gamma expression genes. So of course, uh, uh, we will uh, analyze with, uh, I think, eight more uh, um, immune genes yeah, uh, for, for this study. And also, uh, my students are also planning to do the PCR to see the what is the impact of, of uh, this mangrove uh, into the uh, immune system in, in the mice. Okay, uh, we move to... Still have time. Okay, uh, I hope I can finish in 10 minutes. Okay, we move to the anti dengue screening. Uh, so this screening uh, using the uh, NS two uh, B uh, NS three uh, protease uh, uh, assay. So uh, for your information, this uh, protein is um, is responsible for the for the replication of this virus. So the the concept is if uh, mangrove can inhibit uh, this protein. Uh, this uh, uh, dengue virus cannot replicate, uh, cannot ca uh, cannot uh, replicate and cannot grow. Uh, so we hope that uh, with the, the inhibition of this protein, is also um, indicate that this mangrove can uh, uh, treat uh, the the dengue. Okay, this is the method. Uh, in overall, I don't want to go in details. Uh, if you interested to to know about this, maybe you can contact me personally. Uh, maybe uh, yeah, I can uh, pro uh, provide you uh, the methodology. Okay, this is ju just to show the expression of uh, this uh, protein. Also, we purified it, and then uh, this is the the assay. Uh, uh, we used um, uh, substrates. Uh, uh, this is the substrate that we use, and then after that. Uh, we uh, calculate the IC50 value to see which uh, mangrove extract have the the better uh, anti uh, dengue uh, activity. So the samples we use the, this concentration of samples. Okay, uh, as a result, <coughs> so we found that the uh, uh, Rhizophora. Um, uh, um, RAL, uh, Rizophora apiculata, Rizophora apiculata leaf uh, is uh, have the highest uh, uh, anti dengue activity uh, compared to 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 other uh, samples. So Rizophora apiculata leaf uh, in uh, ethanol extracts, uh, followed by the Rizophora mucrota uh, leaf. Okay. Um, Okay, this one I already explained. Um, we want to see uh, whether um, our um, extract can inhibit uh, this um, this enzyme, uh, the NS to be uh, NS three uh, uh, protease uh, enzyme. So once uh, this compound binds with the enzyme, so this um, uh, substrate cannot bind, and then it will uh, um, inhibit uh, this protease. Yeah? So that the the virus cannot replicate anymore. Okay, um, so um, as um, a comparison to other study, also I, we found that uh, these uh, mangrove extract have uh, 
quite promising uh, uh, anti dengue activity compared to other uh, studies. As you can see here, the acidity of other studies is about 20 to 30 uh, microgram per mil, but ours is uh, less than one, uh, one uh, microgram uh, per mil, not less, uh, yeah, 0 0.94, uh, the, the lowest, which is the uh, Rhizophora apiticulata uh, leaves have a lower a lower than one uh, microgram uh, per mil. Okay, so this indicates that uh, this extract have very promising um, 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 activity. It means uh, we can use this um, uh, uh, extract to to isolate the candidate uh, for anti dengue uh, uh, drugs. Okay, uh, we also done a. Uh, Screening, a uh, phytochemical screening uh, on the, this uh, uh, RAL, uh, acid of RAL. We just want to see uh, what compounds inside this crude extract. Okay, we use the LCQ TOF and SMS. Uh, this is the condition of the LCQ TOF. I think uh, maybe most of you know better than me uh, about this. Okay, um, this is the chromatogram, and we found that there is uh, several. Uh, uh, compound that's quite uh, obvious uh, in, in this uh, um, atomic acid of RAL, which is the uh, allergic acid, chlorogenic acid, and also the diazine, and also the hesperidine. So we searched uh, about this compound and we found that this compound is already uh, re re reported to have the uh, anti dengue activity, especially for allerg allergic acid. And also uh, that zinc, uh, um, uh, that zinc. Yeah. So we we postulate that maybe the anti activity of uh, this um, uh, mangrove extract, the Rhizophora uh, uh, extract, is because of the cons this compound. Of course, uh, after this we will do further uh, uh, fractionation and also uh, the isolation of compound that uh, res responsible for the anti dengue activities. Okay, um, uh, for future study, uh, of course, uh, I, I, uh, I forgot to mention uh, the anti dengue. I just presented the uh, uh, water and also ethanol extract. We still uh, in the process to do the ethyl estate and hexane, but uh, based on the result, I'm quite sure that the ethyl estate and hexane maybe is. Uh, cannot exceed the 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 ethanol extract of uh, Rhizophora uh, particularly. So we quite sure because the activity is quite high uh, for anti dengue activity for the ethanol extract. So, but uh, uh, my research assistant is doing uh, for another twenty six samples, um, and also uh, as I said, um, because of the pandemic, we, there's a delay in terms of uh, sending sample uh, from Indonesia to us. So after this, we also uh, will screen um, uh, the uh, mangrove samples from Indonesia just to compare uh, the activity of uh, uh, mangrove from Malaysia and Indonesia. And also after this, we will we'll do the fractionation of the, maybe we just select the, the highest, uh, the extract that have the highest activity. Uh, and also hopefully, um, we can go for until isolation and maybe we can go until uh, uh, isolate the compound that responsible uh, for for the both activities like for NTTB and also uh, for anti dengue <laughs> and also uh, last but not least uh, this uh, is the my PhD uh, students project uh, she is uh, in the process to analyze the innate and additive imaging uh, gene expression profiles uh, in TB infected mice against selected mangrove via the RT qPCR and also uh, uh, RT PCR array. Okay, um, so I just want to say thanks uh, to the uh, all the people involved in this project, especially Dr. Zarina Amin, Dr. Chayo Budima, Dr. Noatira, and also our collaborators from Indonesia, which is uh, uh, Dr. Collis uh, Auda from a Swiss uh, German university. So this uh, project is uh, done by my students, PhD and master student, which is uh, Tamar Council, Ayn Misra, and also the uh, Intan Zulaika. 
So and also uh, thanks to lab assistants that um, uh, involved uh, in this project, especially in the uh, we do the animal uh, uh, we infect the the TB into animals. Uh, it's quite a lot challenging, especially during the pandemic. Uh, several times we need to redo the, the experiments because the lab is closed and the uh, the mice just died like that. Uh, okay, I think we redo the experiments more than three times so that's the challenge challenging uh, to do the this research during the, this pandemic um, and also i would like to thank the swiss german university of indonesia i think uh, they have sponsored me a lot uh, as to travel to uh, indonesia to give talk uh, about the uh, progress of this uh, uh, research a faculty of medicine and health sciences uh, for, for providing us the the tb especially the tb bacteria uh, staff in Sulaiman uh, Lake uh, Mango uh, Tuaran for, for the samples. And also, uh, last but not least, the, the grant that support uh, 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 this uh, uh, project. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Ruzaidi. It's very uh, interesting. And uh, uh, before the other participants, they uh, would like to uh, ask. Uh, I, uh, I myself having uh, some uh, question. Uh, so, uh, if, uh, as much as I see that the your the study uh, still uh, uh, using the the crude extract, right? Yes. So this is very interesting because usually, as much as I know from the uh, velo of our organic uh, chemistry research, is that usually that using the uh, crude extract, the the activity uh, low, but here I find that uh, it's very high, it included the antioxidant and and, and almost the the anti. Uh, so. It is um, related to uh, your first um, explanation about the potential of mangrove. However, unfortunately, uh, we are uh, Indonesia and Malaysia have the largest source of mangrove, but uh, very limited uh, export. So I think this uh, uh, is very, uh, uh, very lots of opportunity for for us. Uh, to working in this uh, area because uh, from Indonesia uh, that you uh, this from a Swiss German university that collaborate with you so and in our department Dr. Uh, Horil Anam so maybe because uh, yeah to to take a sample from the mangrove is uh, challenging and uh, oh yeah so but uh, from the phytochemical um, uh, 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 it is. Uh, I found that the the uh, the uh, the compound is not um, is not completely uh, unique. I mean that it's like, like tetrazine, uh, uh, organic acid. So uh, so I mean that it is in this case that this uh, mangrove produce this kind of um, uh, organic acid more comparing to the another plants something like that okay uh, uh the lc ms or chromatogram i showed that's the, just to see what is the the main compounds uh oh, I see. In, in the mangrove i think we don't uh really uh go details about all the compounds i think we we <laughs> uh found that's more than Thousand compounds uh, exist uh, in the mangrove, but we just highlight the the the, the, the main compounds only. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, after this, I think the the future. I think we need to fraction it to make it uh, a, a small fraction, and then test it, uh, and then see which fraction have the the the, the, the highest activity, and before we can isolate or identify. Which compounds is mainly responsible for for this activity? So that, that's the future direction for this study. Okay, uh, it's, um, but still, I still miss because uh, that, like you mentioned, it's the main the main compound uh, as uh, but it's as the crude. So I think it's a potential from this uh, 
uh, from this main compound that has reversible uh, because uh, I have uh, already uh, also recently have uh, experience about that. That's um, uh, usually we, we talk that um, that the uh, the highest polyphenol activity uh, correlated with antioxidant, but it's not um, um, uh, it's not like uh, completely like that because uh, one of my students having a high, very high uh, polyphenol, however, the antioxidant activity is low. So uh, from uh, some, uh, uh, some report is uh, talking about the uh, or, uh, polyphenol acid. So I think it's, uh, there is a, a correlation between this and, and also uh, the, this compound, uh, 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 usually in uh, lipophilic uh, activity, so that's why maybe this uh, has this correlation with the uh, the activity of anti dengue uh, because it's working on the enzyme. So maybe because of that. Okay, for uh, maybe uh, there is a okay. This uh, the another question: Is it possible for the active substances found in mangrove to be synthesized because the extract is certainly not environmentally friendly? So it's a common uh, question, actually. So what do you think? Of, uh... Yeah, uh, de definitely. <laughs> I think yes. in future, yes, uh, because I'm not chemist. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's, it's possible or not. Because as I said, uh, we have our own uh, uh, chemist uh, to do that. But uh, for my research, actually, we, uh, we want um, uh, if possible, if can, uh, uh, we just want to use the, the natural compounds uh, rather than synthesized uh, compounds. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, I, I have another uh, question. Okay. Does the type of soil greatly uh, affect the character of the active substances of the mangrove? Okay. Uh, it's not scope of the study, but based on my knowledge, yes, definitely the, the soil is a, a, a fact and the, the, the compounds uh, in, in the mangrove. Uh, uh, unfortunately, this uh, study is, is not going to, 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 what, to differentiate, uh, uh, to means to analyze uh, what type of uh, soil sample and so on. But definitely, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, paper reported that uh, soils uh, affected uh, um, the, the compounds that uh, exist uh, in the plants. Okay, another question. Okay, I think uh, I have, I have uh, still uh, one uh, question because maybe I, because I'm curious about the, um, the, the method for the uh, anti dengue uh, activity so uh, okay maybe maybe um, uh, like uh, previously dr zadi will share the, <laughs> the method uh, to us so well uh, regarding to this uh, uh, the topic no question more so this all Okay, uh, so I think because um, uh, it's already uh, close to the uh, the final, and uh, and uh, again, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Rizadi. It's uh, very open for us that the uh, we have a, a lot of opportunity that we have the largest uh, uh, source of the mangrove, but the. Um, uh, the explore from uh, Indonesian and Malaysian scientists, uh, unfortunately, still uh, very low. So it is a wake up call for us. And uh, I, uh, I personally agree. Uh, even I'm a chemist or biochemist actually, and uh, I prefer to use uh, the uh, uh, alternative uh, relating to the synthesis because recently we all uh, know that there are so many uh, issue that already report re uh, relating to the, the drug synthesis. So the uh, attention into the, um, uh, the uh, alternative drug, uh, uh, herbal, uh, is, um, is uh, a lot. Yeah. So uh, uh, I think- There is there's more, one more question. In okay. The, you, can, you can read in the screen. Okay. 
uh, I may be missed from your presentation. Is there any specific secondary metabolite that have certain role for antimycobacterium tuberculosis? Uh, the last question. Yeah, actually, we we uh, not running um, um, uh, any uh, LCMS for for the sample that highest uh, anti-TB activity. Uh, um, um, uh, for 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 NTTB, uh, yes, um, I can say that because uh, for one of my master students has run not the highest one, uh, as the highest extract, but one of the extracts of the uh, NTTB uh, uh, activities, and then they found some. Uh, I forget the, the the what what's compounds. Uh, yeah, uh, we can say that some of the uh, secondary metabolites is already reported uh, uh, to have uh, NTTB activity also exists in the extract. Uh, sorry, I, I forget the, the, the name of compounds. I think we have we identify uh, about three or four compounds that exist in the extract, but we're not run, uh, running uh, uh, the extract that have highest activity yet because uh, this, the, the, the study is still ongoing. But uh, one of the samples, yes, uh, uh, we confirm that it uh, has uh, some of the compounds that previously reported to have uh, anti-TB uh, uh, activities. Okay, uh, I think this another question. Uh, yeah, is it? No, no. Uh, can we apply the content of the secondary metabolite in mangrove for other application uh, besides anti tuberculosis and anti dengue? I think yes. Uh, as I said, uh, our collaborators in uh, in Indonesia screen uh, this is for antibacterial, uh, uh, and um, uh, even worldwide also uh, they use it for anti. Uh, T, uh, anti, not anti TB, uh, anti tumor, anti diabetes, and so on. Yes. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, it is possible uh, to even. Uh, I have one another project uh, using uh, mangrove to to screen for uh, for for anti uh, uh, hyperglycemic uh, activities. Uh, so yeah, it is possible. Um, I think, uh, as I said. Uh, because this mangrove is live in a very harsh condition, they produce a lot of secondary metabolites that we can explore for, for maybe for other disease. Okay, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, there is another question? No? No. Not more? Okay. So I think uh, we are already in the final. So. Yeah, uh, thank you again uh, for Dr. Ruzaidi for the uh, very uh, interesting topic today. And of course, uh, thank you also for the audience and the, for the active participation. So hopefully the presentation uh, today will give benefit for all of us. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. See you later in the next uh, JKSA webinar. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Ruzaidi. Thank you. you thank you. Thank you. Hope, hope thank to you, see you, see you all uh, here uh, in Malaysia. Yes. Yeah. You're almost welcome okay. to come here. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Hopefully. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, bulan depan ya Bapak Ibu Insya Allah gabung lagi dengan topik yang baru dengan topik yang yang berbeda nanti dikoordinasikan lagi dengan Bu Yayu dan teman-teman yang lain terima kasih atas kehadirannya Enggak, mungkin kalau ada usulan atau mungkin ada ada yang bisa dikoneksikan uh, kita welcome ada lagi tambahan mungkin dari Bu Yayu terima kasih Bu Agustin dan semuanya teman-teman yang lain Ya, yeah, sami-sami. Oke, okay, terima kasih. Terima kasih. Sertifikatnya sudah dapat semua ya. Silakan yang belum dapat bisa ngisi di link yang belum dapat sertifikat bisa ngisi di linknya ini.
sudah uh, langsung dapat gitu dalam waktu satu menit. Uh, silahkan kalau mau bisa klik dan dapat sertifikatnya dalam waktu satu menit. Bagi yang belum. Thank you. 